Hello YouTube, SucraFox here. So welcome to the final part of my Redant Game Axe restoration stroke modification. I'm um, restoring this Game Axe and putting in a brand new TFT LCD screen. And it's all done. It's in there. So uh, before I uh, show you how it looks, I'll just have a look at what's been taken out. And this is the old 4 inch LCD. So we've downgraded slightly to 3.5 inch, but the improvement in... Um, in quality more than makes up for that so this is what's come out and that's the sort of thickness it's in mounted inside the unit so really thick and this is uh, 200 grams worth of stuff that's come out and the new screen weighs 50 grams so the unit's gone on quite a quite a significant weight loss so uh, there's just that plastic mounting bracket in there we took out the inverter board all this does is it takes the 9 volt, uh, which way around is it mounted, it was mounted like that, it takes the 9 volt input DC and ramps it up to 120 volts to light up the fluorescent tube which is filled with mercury vapour. So yeah, it's got a fuse on it, it's got, uh, it's got quite a bit of stuff to deal with the actual increase in power to run the tube. It's got, as has the main circuit board, as you'll see in my pictures I'm going to show you in a bit, a lot of chips with um, the names all ground off, which is a bit odd. So that's um, completely useless. That was needed to run the present tube, which has obviously totally been replaced with a new LCD with its um, own backlight. And the new LCD's invert board, well, it's just a circuit board built into the back of the actual screen, you don't even see it. So that came out. Don't need that at all anymore. This is the LCD itself, enormous chunky thing with rust on it. All these marks here you could see were just, um, it's just this plastic film on the back. Looks like liquid's leaked but it's not, it's just sticky. So this is where the tube was. Big sort of uh, U-shape or C-shaped tube sat in there which was smashed. So quite low tech really for 1997 when this was made. That sits in there. Currents pass through the mercury vapour. Illuminates the LCD. A huge pile of junk's come out of this thing and it's much, much lighter. So, let's have a little look at it with the new um, screen in action. It's quite difficult to actually get the colour and the looking good on the camcorder, it looks brilliant in real life. So it's absolutely crystal clear, as you'd expect. I've tried to get it mounted as best I can in the middle. We've obviously lost a little bit of um, screen around the edge. I've, ca I've kept the black bezel on the front of it just so you don't get any, um, any sort of bits of metal coming into, coming into view around the edge of the LCD. But Camcorder's not really doing it justice, but it's really, really nice. You'll see it in the pictures I've taken. Uh, yeah, so following will be some some pictures I've taken of the actual mod uh, showing how to do it if you want to do it, where to solder everything. Uh, so before I do that, uh, show the pictures, I'll just show you how it's set up using my little 60 72 pin adapter because you've got to put it in a certain way. So, let's have a look at that. So we've got Snake Rattler the Roll there playing. If I pan out a bit, you can see that's uh, using this huge tower that's created via the, uh, the little adapter. So an excellent game, I used to play this on the M82 demo system in Dixon's. Again, not coming out very well on the screen, on the camcorder, but in real life the actual screen looks absolutely beautiful. That's a bit of a, a, bit of a better distance. Obviously not really going to be able to play it very well. So I'll just turn that off and uh, 
show you how you do it. So there's quite a different variety of these um, 60, 72 bin adapters. This one, uh, I've seen a few pictures on the internet, but not many of it. But if you happen to pick up this one, there's no instructions with it telling you how to orientate it. So basically, you have this at the front, the family family converter, 60 to 72 pins writing on the front, and you have the NES card fa cart facing backwards. That's how you do it. So on pretty much all of them, the NES cart faces backwards. So I'll just talk a little bit more about the mod. Just trying to try and get this off the top one-handed. There we go. That's the real challenge, getting actually out of the uh, out of the NES cart. So the mod is absolutely amazing improvement, really. I never saw this screen working because the backlight was smashed, but I've, from what I've read, the screen was very blurred, really low resolution. It's now crystal clear. Uh, another another really good thing is it still works. Obviously, uh, you can still play games on the TV via the AV out. But one thing I wasn't sure would still work is the AV in. I wasn't sure if that somehow relied on the inverter board. But, uh, yeah, I'll just uh, show some footage that actually the AV in does work. And it turns this console into a very useful... Uh, very useful thing to have, a little um, high quality 3.5 inch screen, so I'll show you that in action. Okay, so we've got a strange conjunction of beasts here, we've got the Panasonic 3DO FZ1 or FZ1, and it is joined via AV in to the GameAx with its new LCD screen. Now I've got this um, hooked up, it's via the uh, 3.5mm little jack on the side there, the AV and jack, and this is hooked up via an old cable that came with my brother's uh, CD player back in 1992, so I've just got that hooked up into the to the video. So, just to prove that the AV in on the GameAx still works, we'll turn the 3DO on, and the GameAx is already on. You see AV pop up there. Sure, that's coming out okay there. You've got the 3DO logo. Ah, there we go. That's a better angle. So, yeah, really nice on this um, TFT screen. So basically, the um, the game mats can serve as a portable screen for for anything really. Let's turn the volume up a little touch. That's got some volume to it. Not sure if you can hear that. Just running through the 3DO sort of splash screen. So yeah, I wasn't sure if removing the whole inverter board would actually disable the AV in, but no, it's working fine. So uh, yeah, it's probably never been seen before, a 3DO playing via a game axe. <laughs> pretty cool. So, um, there we go, AV install works. Okay, so yeah, you've seen it playing um, 3DO. So there it is playing the old My Young game. Crystal clear as ever. So, very, very happy with this mod. It is a very simple mod, very similar to the uh, Nomad mod, which is what I copied the only difference being uh, 
where you solder to get your power to the screen slightly different places obviously all the um, soldering for the AV port is exactly the same because it's the same port as on the Nomad which did help quite a lot so really really happy got rid of a load of junk from inside it that was completely completely outdated and it's rescued this old console and I'm really happy to have it in the collection now because it's a handheld Famicom and it's just going to be so useful to have it if you ever want to take a console away and don't have a TV or just don't have a TV to hand and just want to hook something up really really useful really well made really well made piece of kit really happy with it really happy with how it's gone just uh, yeah, got to learn how to play my young now. So, following is um, a series of photos of the mod in case you want to do it. Uh, just explaining in more detail. So, yeah, thanks for thanks for following this little series of videos. <laughs> 